welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Sam Monroe, and in today's video, I'm going to explain what is a species, how we identify them, and why many scientists still can't agree on what a species really is. If you are new here, I'm Dr. Sam Monroe and I am an ecologist. That means I study plants and animals and how they interact with their environment. I have studied all sorts of wildlife, everything from sharks to shrimps to shrubs, and here on YouTube I like to make videos where I talk about cool ecological topics and ideas. Now when I started my career in ecology, there was no idea as important or as confusing as how to define a species. You probably hear us use the word all the time, like when we say we've discovered a new species or when a species is going extinct. But believe it or not, despite being one of the most common and fundamental terms in biology, scientists still aren't exactly sure what a species is. In fact, there are at least 26 different ways that scientists can define and identify species, and it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to agree on just one anytime soon. The most well-known definition of a species, and the one you probably learned in school, is that a species is a group of individuals that can breed with one another, will give birth to fertile offspring, and cannot breed with other groups. This definition is known as the biological species concept. It was popularized in the 19th 40s by biologist Ernst Mayer, who felt that the key criteria for identifying species was whether or not individuals could successfully interbreed. For example, donkeys and horses can mate and produce offspring, which we call mules. But mules are infertile, meaning they cannot produce offspring of their own. So using the biological species concept, we can say quite confidently that horses and donkeys are not the same species. Seems pretty simple. Right? Well, unfortunately, the biological species concept starts to fall apart when you realize there are a lot of situations where this definition can't tell you whether or not something is a species. In order to determine if a group of organisms is a species, taxonomists, that is the type of scientist that names and classifies species, will collect data on that group of organisms and then use that data to determine whether or not they meet the criteria to be called a species. But what if we have two groups of animals that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring, but would almost never naturally encounter each other in the wild. For example, polar bears and grizzly bears, who don't normally interact very much in the wild, are coming into increased contact with one another as their habitat ranges change as a result of global warming. And as it turns out, they can have fertile offspring. Now using the biological species concept, one could argue that polar bears and grizzly bears are the same species. But does this really make any sense? After all, for the most part, these two bears still use pretty different habitats, they look nothing alike, and they've evolved really different diets and behaviors. So is it really realistic to call them the same species? In a more extreme example, what about ligers, which are the hybrid offspring of lions and tigers? Ligers are fertile, which means they can produce offspring, and they successfully mate with other lions and tigers. So using the biological species definition, we could say that lions and tigers are the same species. But the only time lions and tigers encounter one another is when we force them to live together in zoos. They never naturally encounter one another in the wild because they live on different continents. Or what about bacteria, worms, and sea stars, all of which can multiply asexually, meaning they don't need a mate to reproduce? The biological species concept in those cases isn't really very helpful. And what happens if you have a species that's already gone extinct and all we have is fossil records? How then can you test to see whether or not they were a species? How do we really know which dinosaurs or ancient fish and whales mated and successfully reproduced? We can't. We can never go back and test that, which means paleontologists can't use the biological species concept to identify species. This is why we have so many different definitions for what a species is and why scientists can't really tell you exactly what a species is. 
there is no single all-encompassing universal definition for a species because no single definition will work in every situation. Honestly, we need different definitions and rules for identifying species depending on the circumstance and the type of data that we have available. For example, other useful ways to identify species include the morphological species concept. This defines a species as a group of individuals that are physically similar to one another and are physically distinct from all other groups. Paleontologists in particular use the morphological species concept because the only data that they have to identify species is what they used to look like. Another useful one is the ecological species concept, which defines a species as a group of organisms all using the same set of resources, or niche, in their environment. This definition allows us to distinguish lions from tigers and grizzly bears from polar bears because although they can interbreed, all these different species have adapted to use really different resources. They use different habitats and eat different food. An important game changer in identifying species is, of course, DNA. After all, we should just be able to look at the genetic codes of different plants and animals, see how similar they are, and use that to decide if they're a species. This is what is known as the genetic species concept, and it has been extremely useful in identifying species, particularly those that reproduce asexually. Unfortunately, DNA still isn't a perfect way to identify species because we haven't worked out an exact amount of DNA that species need to have in common in order to call them one species. For example, Two closely related species of bacteria can actually be more genetically distinct than humans are from other primates. In fact, the genetic variation between individual bacteria within the same species is sometimes so large that trying to use the term species to define microbes really just doesn't have the same meaning as when we use it to refer to plants and animals. We also may not be able to obtain genetic records for all species, like if they've gone extinct. And again, you may have two species that are very similar genetically, like polar bears and grizzly bears, but from an ecological perspective are clearly not the same species. However, DNA has also been very useful in helping us understand the evolutionary relationships between species. DNA has helped us determine how different species are related to one another and how species have changed over time and evolved into new species. These changes and relationships are usually depicted using something called a tree of life, which is a diagram that illustrates how all the different species in the world are related to one another based on their similarities and differences, including similarities and differences in their DNA. Each branch on the tree represents a point in time and space where a new species evolved from an older previous species. This brings us to the evolutionary species concept, which argues that a species is a single lineage or branch on the evolutionary tree, and that all individuals in a species should descend from one common ancestor. So how is it possible, with all of these seemingly conflicting definitions for what a species is, do taxonomists even function? How can we identify new species if we can't even agree on a definition? Well, taxonomists don't just rely on one concept or one type of data when identifying species. They'll use a combination of genetic, ecological, and morphological data to make that decision. They will use the criteria that are most appropriate given the situation and the data they have available. It's also important to know that how we group species is constantly changing. Taxonomists are always questioning, reconsidering, and debating whether or not how they group species today is actually correct, and they might change their minds when they get new data. While our classifications may be imperfect and can certainly change, it is still really important that we try to identify and group species to the best of our ability. This is because we need to be able to distinguish and group unique organisms in order to do things like map out an ecosystem, monitor population trends, or work out whether or not a species might be going extinct. And that is why continued discussion, debate, and study about what a species really is is so important to ecology. All right, everybody, that is all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments below, were there any cool hybrids that I forgot to mention? And what type of species concept makes the most sense to you? Let me know what other cool ecological ideas you might like me to discuss. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And hit that bell so you can be notified about the next video I do all about ecology.